Chapter 11. Yes, Queen? When Red got home to the castle, reluctant to face Dora and Twee again, she found that her mother had joined them in the ballroom. I couldn't take any chances, darling, the Queen said. We really need to make some progress. You're doing worse than I expected. Sorry, Red muttered. Twee and Dora said nothing, but eyed Red suspiciously. Have a seat. The Queen of Hearts patted the back of one of the ornate little chairs around the tea table. Now where did my frog boys go? Frog boys, she yelled, stomping toward the hall. Where were you yesterday? Dora asked. Her arms were crossed, working on a project. Red said as she sat. It's the height of rudeness, you know, Twee said, to stand somebody up. I know, I apologize. I don't believe you're really sorry, Dora said suddenly. Twee and I have worked very hard to get a spot in the Queen's Court instead of becoming soldier cards or servants, and I don't think you have what it takes to be Queen. I've seen you hanging out with that Chester boy, Twee said in a low voice. You know this fa his family comes from a long line of Chesters, right? From up near Bramble Bay around Caterpillar's Bush, if I'm not mistaken. You can't trust anything they say, and once they've manipulated you to do their bidding, they vanish. They've known, they're known for undermining the queen, Dora whispered. The rumor is that they are the ones who want to be on the throne. I wouldn't know anything about that, Red cleared her throat and put her napkin in her lap, correctly this time. But she did wonder, not for the first time, about Bramble Bay. And I don't like being spied on. If you're plotting anything with him, you'd better be careful. You seem like just the type he would take advantage of. Twee continued, clucking her tongue in patronizing sympathy. Someone close to power, but suggestible. Naive. A pushover, nothing like your mother, Dora agreed. Red felt a hot churn start starting in the pit of her stomach. But before she could say anything, the queen returned with a line of frog butlers. They were dressed in their finest scarlet coats and tails, wearing bow ties dotted with tiny hearts. The butlers flanked either side of the tea table as the queen took a seat with the girls. On with our training at last, she said, clearing her throat. Twee, Dora, and the queen placed their napkins in their laps in perfect unison. Without hesitation, the queen of hearts sipped from her teacup and reached for the oyster fork. It was then that Red realized her mother did know everything about Twee and Dora did, and she knew it better. The queen could be a short-tempered tyrant, but this disciplined world was the one she'd created for Wonderland. It was the Queen of Hearts alone who set the standard for everyone else. And that was exactly why she was able to break it. Red's thoughts were interrupted by the butler at her elbow, who placed a single cold oyster from the boiling hot sea onto her plate. Thank you, Red said shortly, though she didn't feel any gratitude for the slimy appetizer at all. Dora rolled her eyes and Twee raised an eyebrow. You don't thank them, the Queen of Hearts corrected flatly. Red's shoulders sagged. Sorry. Red, the Queen continued, do you like oysters? No, Red said, frowning at her mother. She knew Red didn't. Then why didn't you say anything to the frog boys? They're just serving what's on the menu, right? They don't know I hate oysters. They should, the Queen leaned over the table, watching Red intently. It's their job to know. You are the one in power. They should know they should know you inside and out. Cater to your every need. Anticipate your every whim. The fact that they gave you something you dislike is a direct insult to you and your authority. Red pursed her lips. The butler had a weary expression on his face, and Red suspected he had been told to serve her oyster, the oyster on purpose. Dora and Twee exchanged smug looks as if to say, You know she can't do it. No way. Red bristled. For all their supposed politeness, the girls were being very rude, and their suspicion of Red was putting in the secret party in jeopardy. The Queen of Hearts was be being irritably with all this ridiculous training, and the quivering, gelatinous body of the oyster in its shell was making Red feel sick. Take it away, she snapped. My lady, the butler murmured. You heard me. Red's own voice jumped in volume, 
and she summoned all the same commanding tone she used with the Duchess. You would serve me this dish when you know I dislike it? That is unacceptable. My deepest apologies, the servant bowed and removed the plate. Mole, the Queen of Hearts said. Um, wretch my race. And I, am I to be without an appetizer then? Bring me a souffle. A souffle? My lady, there are none prepared, the butler croaked. Tweez and Dora's smirks had disappeared, replaced with an expression of mild surprise. Did I ask whether there were any prepared? Red said coldly. Very good, the queen whispered, her mother whispered. And Red understood that they were moving past the part of the training that covered decor decorum. This was about exercising power. The butler, looking distressed, continued. I will tell the chef immediately, though it may take a bit of time. In one swift movement, Red yanked the plate from his hands and threw it across the room like a frisbee. It hit the castle wall with a crash, shattering pieces of itself and shards of oyster shell onto the floor. Red's heart was pounding. For a moment, time stood still. No one took a breath. Then the butler bowed low. Very good, my lady. And clean that up, Red commanded before before her boldness faded. The frog butler scattered, bringing a new place setting to the table, cleaning up the mess and bearing fresh tea from the kitchen. Dora's eyes went were wide and Twee looked slightly nervous, but the Queen of Hearts grinned so broadly that her smile nearly matched the like, likes of Chester's. Very good indeed, she said. At our next training session, I want to hear your best new law for the decree. One that will make you feared, respected, in the driver's seat of this whole kingdom. And you read? And read? Yes. Make it heartless. Do I have to? Red whispered. Oh, said the queen, whose face changed immediately when she noticed Red's hesitation. I thought you had it in you to be like me. The disappointment in her tone was so palpable that even Doran Tweet didn't sneak her.